think. Come on, work. I've had to do three meetings today on the video already. There we go. And been interviewed twice. So <laughs> it's an interesting day of me talking to people. They're like, we want to talk to you. But David, man, welcome to the show. This is an honor to have you here. Thanks for having me. I'm a pleasure to talk to anyone, especially during these times of days that it had missing missing conventions. And it's it's just good to talk shop and, and talk with someone, you know, I don't get to talk to often. It's nice. It's fair. Yeah, you're like new person who I can't get sick from. Holy hell, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the other one, I do we didn't say it before we started the show, but this is an uncensored show. You can say fuck whatever the hell you want. You are good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, I like to help you. When people are like, wait, can I say the word ass? I'm like, yes, you can. If you listen to the previous episodes, it's been sex talk. Get out of here. Yeah, you're good. I I have an 11 year old upstairs playing FIFA right now, so so he can he can always hear me. But at the same time, it's always good to 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 say what you want to say. I have a strange feeling that you probably hear him because I like to play NHL with friends a lot. So I have a strange mm -hmm. feeling you hear him a lot, like the screaming, especially if he's playing FIFA. Like the anger's got to be real. No, because at one he's pretty good at it, but 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 two we we you know we we try to keep you know even kill you know him and I and we spend a lot of time you know competing and doing things so we're we're pretty even kill but uh, he's also he also knows I'm on this interview right now so he'll he'll always you know be but occasionally you're right you'll you'll hear him say no you know yell yell to the heavens. Yeah, we uh, we got that with the doctor's kid at my work at the animal house. One of the many jobs I do, he goes in into one of the offices when he's home from because no school, so he right. stays there and whatnot. She takes care of him, and all of a sudden he'll be walking down the hallway and always say no, and this is very loud pitch scream. Like, what is that? <laughs> What's going on? Here? <laughs> like is it a ghost? Like I figured we'd have ghost dogs, but all right, yeah. fair enough. But yeah, man, you know, it's good. It's really good. I. You know what, to be honest with you, though, like doing these, doing podcasts still, doing meetings helps. It's okay when it's work. But doing like podcasts has been like almost therapy. That and writing comics. But yeah, because we need a good break these days. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was, I, I went to a, a Comics Pro um, a mixer just a couple of days ago. And cool. so Comics Pros is a, a community of stores that are part of a membership and uh, they they go and so it's all a bunch of retailers and they hold an annual event just for retailers and you have to be a paid member to go there um, and publishers go to pitch basically to a captive audience of buyers and so it's really good but i was part of that um in in the day before the actual uh convention that they hold part of an online mixer and it was really fun it was good to talk to you know people in the industry it was probably the closest thing to a convention that I've been a part of since. So I've done online conventions and I've done, you know, Zoom calls and Zoom meetings and, and you know, things like that. But that environment of such a uh, eclectic, you know, group of people mm. all common, you know, for uh, all there for a common reason was probably the closest thing to a convention that I've experienced since this pandemic happened. Oh, man, that that sounds beautiful in a sense. Because, yeah. like, we, because we miss that. You and I are people... Yeah persons at least i think you're a people person but i mean like in our business kind of have to be but it's like the I, man that just sounds really cool and i'm really jealous of that because that sounds like an awesome time like we miss that sort of i miss conventions wholeheartedly whether i'm a guest there or just visiting the convention or something like that like right it's a it's a type of environment that you miss I think it is. In a sense. It is. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely uh, a more private person. You know, like wow. I'm the type of person that can show up in the pub and sit at the bar by myself. You know, watching you know one of the games on the TV, having my drink, having my fish and chips, and just sitting there quiet all all day, happy, and I can leave there happy. And like that, yeah. you know, yeah. And but at the same time, a bunch of people that you know show up that want to have a good time, you know, and talks and stuff like that. You're right. I can interact. I can, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, you know, dislike, you know, interaction by any means, but this pandemic has definitely shown me the value of those interactions, be it small or big. Mm. Well, it's true. I mean, I think that's one thing I think we've all kind of realized from this is we've all taken something from this. And a lot of people who I've talked to friends of mine on record, off record on the show, we've, we all realize something, especially comic book. Uh, my buddy Paul, who lives in the Philippines, who's my artist on my books, you know, he's mm -hmm. he's realized stuff. Like we all come to realization that 
there's things that we needed to learn about ourselves that the pandemic kind of taught us in a way. Yeah. Good yeah. or bad, good or bad, <laughs> to say the least. Um, because there's been a high divorce rate, sadly. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, like that's the nice part about it, man. And it seems like you're a very busy person, though, by the way. That's why I was surprised to hear that you did that because it almost seems like you're working a lot. Now, hopefully I say that and hopefully you're working right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I actually I have news. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm working on I'm working on a Batman project right now with a great, mm. great team. Um, and uh uh, it's it's really awesome to to be a part of it. They it's it's different. It's a digital first series. We we do digital first in ten um, page comics. You know, so like okay. it, it's always like a two parter. Always makes one comics, but it just got announced. You know, uh, the Legend of the Dark Knight. Um, you know, the new Batman series, but it's digital first. It will get printed, which is really cool. Um, the pages are wonderful. The whole teams that they have lined up. Um, are wonderful, but because it's an anthology series, um, you know, you're you're on it, and then you're off, then you're on it, then you're off, you know, things like that. Uh, but you can't complain because it's Batman. Batman's, you know, the best character in all comics, in my opinion. Uh, so anytime I am able to work on Batman, I am uh, just over the moon for it. Just you know, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, work is different. I am busy, but most of my uh work right now so i i have the ba batman series that i'm working on uh i'm working on a book a uh, creator own book with some friends as a colorist and then i'm writing four other creator own books um that have not yeah that have not came out yet um one has been announced uh, as a children's book uh it's a oh. 64 page one shot uh, i'm working with uh artist elisa wiki uh she's amazing if you haven't you know she's a she's um a children's uh, illust book illustrator. She uh, yeah. went to college for it, but her talent and her creativity is, you know, on a level that uh, just floors me every time. Uh, so I can't wait for people to see that book. Um, but we are, I was just on the phone with her before I hopped on with you. Uh, she, we are almost at that halfway point. And I just told her like, wow. oh, we are ready to, uh, you know, start celebrating a little bit, you know, mildly before our big, you know, book project done. But uh, um, it's been really rewarding. And, and I feel like this pandemic, again, um, has really either made people more productive or less productive, yeah. depending on their personalities. For me, it's been more productive. So I'm doing a lot of projects. But in reality, I don't feel like I'm adding more time to my day. Uh, mm. where in the past I've done less projects with more hours being taken because uh, the product, uh, productivity has been low. But, you know, I've been, I've been pretty pro productive. It's, it's been a, a success story for me. Uh, during the pandemic, I lost, I think, like 60 pounds. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, I went, I went from 225. And most people that know me, they're like, oh, I didn't think you had 60 pounds to lose. And, and it's just the way I hold weight. Mm. But uh, I went from uh, 225, and I'm 165 right now. And you look uh, fit. Like, you know, I, I honestly, you look pretty good. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's mainly because me and my son, you know, it's it's part of that, you know, fatherhood type of thing where it's like, I need to make sure my son is active, you know, throughout mm. this, you know, pandemic. And we only have one kid, and and um, uh, he's 11. And, and so without his friends, you know, you really have to step up and, and do a lot more, but we work out, uh, you know, six out of the seven days a week, uh, oh, between yeah, lifting weights and, and playing soccer or a soccer awesome. family. And, um, we cook every day and, you know, all that type of stuff. So when you can control your own food of what you cook, you know, it makes it a little bit easier as well. So, you know, right now, you know, we're, we're really lucky, um, to be doing so well as a family, you know, during the pandemic. Um, and especially cause I have so many friends, you know, in Texas right now and, and Elisa, my artist, she's in Texas with her husband. I have, you know, several other friends, you know, in Texas and they're, they're pulling through. Okay. But you know, it's, it's been a rough month for them. Very, very, I mean, you, that by far is a very great success story right there yeah. because I mean, it honestly is like you guys are handling things well and determination. I mean. Obviously, you're a guy who's got his shit together because obviously you wouldn't be doing all of this. And the fact is, I do kind of ask, so why soccer? I know it's not of comics, but why soccer? So, well, my whole family is a sports family. Mm. Um, but my grandfather actually played for Poland in the World Cup. 
uh, before, yeah, before World War II. Um, uh, after World War II, he actually fled to America, and that, that ended his career. Um, but he was actually a soccer player there uh, uh, back in the day. So soccer's, you know, kind of been in our blood of, of the world game. But um, I've always enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed the competition. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot of beautiful things about soccer that until you actually watch it to understand it, you know, it, it's far more complex and far more skilled than a lot yeah. of other sports you can't i mean in football if you are bigger and faster and less skilled chances are you're still going to do well if you are bigger and faster and more skilled you're going to do great yeah. um and there's different skill positions in in football in in you know uh american football in yeah. soccer or you know world football there is the same amount of differences between each position of what attributes you want but at the same time the way you can fill those attributes uh, and dictate the style of play um, is just fascinating to me. Uh, so I've, I've been a part of the game for, for a long time. I've, I've coached for, I don't know, about 20 plus years. And, and in fact, if you know uh, the other colorist, Alex Sinclair, he also, yeah. it, he's also a soccer coach as well. Yeah, and he actually, really? Yeah, he actually coaches girls soccer at, at my old high school <laughs> that, I, that I graduated from. So That's I've known, amazing. I've known, yeah, I've known Alex Sinclair since I was 18. Um, I've actually met him before I was 18 when, cause I started in comics when I was 15 years old. And, wow. um, and then I, uh, it was a sister company of Wildstorm Comics. And then I went to Wildstorm when I turned 18. Um, so I've, I've known, you know, him and, you know, for a long time, he lived in the same, uh, neighborhood that I did as a, as a high schooler. I grew up in San Diego, California, but then I, uh, moved to Scripps Ranch, um, uh, California, which is just a little bit north, you know, of, of the San Diego area, downtown San Diego area. Mm. And, uh, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of connection with him and I, but yeah, no, he, uh, he actually coaches soccer at the, at the place yeah. and the head coach of that program, um, yeah. of the varsity program, uh, is an ex San Diego soccer uh, player who my dad actually helped transition from his professional playing days to business days and so like it was like it's like a small world where it's like he actually knows you know me and you know things like that so it's just a small world of of, of life but yeah Dude, but i want your documentary soccer. out now what the hell yeah, <laughs> this just, sounds amazing it, there's a lot more soccer in comics than you know probably nfl which is kind of funny because of the world players but if you ever ask like someone for britain you know, in England, you know, like Jock, you know, Jock can care less about soccer. And, uh, you know, his, his his sons are into it, but, you know, he's not so much, um, you know, if you ask like, you know, a bunch of other, you know, Brits out there, most of them don't watch. You know, there's there's a few that, you know, we've come into, and yeah. but they're all into music, you know, really heavily. And I think that kind of goes with the whole art side of comics and part of the reason why they're so amazing, you know. It's it's true. It's true, man. You explained soccer so perfectly, though, and the reason why <laughs> I love it a lot. I, I mean, I big, I'm big into soccer. I do love okay. it a lot. Like I do enjoy it. I watch. I play. I play now and then when I can. I mean, when you could, and right. that's sort of thing like that. And mine is hockey mostly, though. Like hockey's mine. Soccer and on then, ice. Yep. It, it, damn it, David. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so good. But what? Better writer than I am, shit. <laughs> Man, that's good. I'm gonna have to tell it because I come from a sports family too, and so I feel that's why like people like I have. I'm literally looking at all these pennants right now for soccer, uh, not soccer, for my high school, my old high school, my hockey teams, baseball teams. I got a bunch of stuff in the back over there. I used to play rugby too, and so that's where a lot of people from Europe were like, "Hey, like." I remember once I got offered the coach. People listening were like, we're getting into the comics, don't worry. But I remember <laughs> once I got offered the position to coach rugby for a little league. And it's a decision that I never – I'm glad you took it, by the way, because I, I'm, I wish I would have taken that chance, man. I really did. I was only 19 at the time, 19 or 20, I think, at the time. I was working at Sprouts, a grocery store out here. So I was like, yeah, you know, and I, one person and I we were talking about rugby. I told him a bit about it, and they said, oh, why don't you come on coach? I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do it. I'm like, there's no way in hell. I am a young kid. What am I going to know? I regret that to this day. So, uh, Yeah, there's, you know, for, for me, before we get to comics, for me, I yeah. started my coaching career in comic career at the same age, at 15. So it all, all started through youth, youth sports, through volunteering and, and you know, coaching, you know, uh, you know, I think it was like under 10s, you know, soccer. 
And, um, you know, but you, you said it earlier about organization and, you know, technical, you know, skill and, and just being able to read the room, you know, basically of, of, you know, life. So, uh, but no, it's, it's enjoyable. Anyone who's, you know, just because you're into comics doesn't mean you can't go coach or, you know, be into sports. It could be a, it could be a universal thing and, oh, and uh, sports in general. Yeah. Oh shoot! I people think I just do that, and also like people like, oh, he's just a comic book writer, and then somebody will come out from the other side of the room or from the show for doing a show, and a fan will be like, no, you know, he actually like takes care of alligators and crocodiles, like at a yeah. sanctuary. It's like, yeah, you know, that's what I love about our Doug, work so much. Yeah, we Doug do... Monkey, you know, the the artist I work with, you know, more than any other artist I've I've actually worked with in my career. Uh, he's a power lifter, and he took up really? powerlifting, you know, later in his life, but. He he's so successful at it uh, that you follow him on um, you know Instagram. You'll see him powerlifting all the time. But he was a special guest at the last Arnold Classic before the pandemic, uh, where it was him and Arnold on a stage together. Um, yeah. You know during during an interview, and um, you know so he he's definitely uh, put together his art and his passion. Um, mm you know, into another whole category that has been quite successful for him. I mean, yeah. if, you're on the same, if you're on the same stage with Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're, you're, you're doing pretty good. You win. You just win. <laughs> Unless you win a World yeah. Cup or something, you win. <laughs> yeah, especially at a, at a, you know, weightlifting, you know, you know, competition. You know, Who it's would not believe like, that? You yeah. need a picture. Like, you just, you'd be like, here's a video, here's this. We'd be like, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he knows he knows Arnold, you know, by by person because of you know not not only because how great of an artist he is, but because of his passion for lifting. Yeah. I've discovered doing this show, and then with friends of mine and people I've been able to talk to and whatnot, just not doing the show. Mm -hmm. People like us who work in comics, we have some weird lives. <laughs> we, we really like we're all over the place, and people like they think people are like, oh yeah, they're one thing. Like no wait, they work in comics. Like wait, what? <laughs> this whole thing. We live fun lives. I think. We we live lives that utter sentences that are never said by anybody else but in our profession. And if they are said in other people's lives in different pro professions, they're usually gone insane. It's, so it's, it's or, or convicted of a crime. Or or convicted of a crime. You know, where it's yeah. it, it's Yeah. <laughs> I can't cannot deny that whatsoever on that one. Man. So you, you did mention this, though, and I, I've known you from video work, and I'm like, you know what, let me look through David's, like, full history here on a lot of stuff, and I went through, you do love Batman, by the way. My God. <laughs> it's yeah. either you really get, but why Batman, though? Like, why is it for you that you like Batman? Because I, I love the Dark Knight. I really do. But why for so, you do you love him? Batman, for me, I think, started, the, the first love started with Michael Keaton um, on the big screen, um, you know, going going at it uh, with with the Joker. And then uh, Batman Returns came out and Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, in that Catwoman costume and, and Danny DeVito as, as a penguin, I think really solidified the, um, just the rogues gallery of what mm -hmm. it is. Then the, then the animation came out um, and that was just stellar. Like it was, that was the best cartoon I've ever seen in my life. Oh my um, and I knew comics back then. I was a collector back then. Um, but I was a collector of Marvel. I, I, oh. I collected X-Men and X-Force. I collected a ton of stuff. You know, I went through, uh, you know, all the, all the X titles and kept, kept going back to X factor and all the, all the old, you know, stuff after X-Men number one came out. My first comic book ever, my first real, not real, but superhero comic book was, um, X-Force number one. Uh, my first comic book ever was GI Joe. Um, oh, and I got that. Good. Yeah, I got those in the newsstands at grocery stores. Um, uh, but my first superhero comic book was X Force uh, number one. That just started the collecting craze, you know, because all the cards and then X Men number one came out with all the different yeah. covers, and so I got all those and and just the whole passion of collecting. And then I went backwards. I collected all the New Mutants and you know all you know all the appearances and all the X Factors that really led to you know these bigger stories um, and. Uh, you know, but but the show came out, and the movie came out, and, and that that really kind of opened my eyes to a little bit more. And then the whole Batman Nightfall with with Bane, you know, happened and big event. And I just kind of kept going through more and more. And that's actually wasn't my favorite series, you know, at the time. I was really enjoying the the 
um, X Men books a lot, mm-hmm. but the whole idea of who Batman was spoke to me. You know, an everyday person using his, you know, uh, mind. I mean, obviously, you know, when you look back politically now as a grown person, thinking like, well, he was a, you know, multimillionaire now in relative today's term, you know, he's a billionaire. Oh, probably uh, trillionaire, really, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you see, uh, you see Beos right now, like, basically looking like Lex Luthor, you know, with all this extra like VR technology and, you know, at these, yeah. you know, technology places, you, you can see it come to life. You can see, you know, uh, life imitating art because this art was, could not in- imitate life because that technology did not exist. And so now you're actually seeing life imitate art and it's just amazing um, to kind of grab. But Batman has always been um, that character for me that has been stronger than um, he, he's always been able to meet whatever was needed out of him. He always was able to dig down deeper and maybe even part of the, the athlete in me and the competitor in me likes the idea that even though you know, the, the p- person across the line from me is bigger and stronger and possibly smarter. For some reason, my will is going to be more powerful. And, um, and so that always spoke. And, and I also liked his weird moral compass. You know, like I'm willing to go punch someone in the face, but I'm not <laughs> going to shoot them. You know, yeah, punch, it's you like... know? And, and like you hear directors all the time talk about if you don't think Batman's killed someone, then you're living in a dream world. And I always laugh at that. Like, Batman is a dream world. Like, it's not yeah. a real place. Like, <laughs> like, you like you know what you're talking world. about? You're talking about yeah. the little name Batman. I mean, and, really? <laughs> and anybody who wants to have Batman kill, in my opinion, doesn't really appreciate who Batman is as a, as a character. True. Because that it's is what true. separates him. The costumes may make people look different. Um, or they might make you look the same. It's, it's the, what the writers give the characters and what the editors and the publishers keep true to the characters is what matters. It's and um, you can bend some of them, but there's some rules that you should never break because at that point, it's no longer that character. I think this is why I had the problem. And I'm not, a, I'm not one of these guys that try to hate on comic book movies by any means, but it's one of the reasons why um, the DC movies, you know, for the most part, minus a lot of the Batman movies have failed is because they ultimately break the actual character. Um, Superman, yeah, yeah. you know, being, you know, really, you know, uh, non-heroic at times and, and you know, uh, breaking down and just becoming, you know, human. Um, you know, they, these guys who say that they're comic book fans uh, don't don't get it, that you, you just took that character and you twisted him and you think you're giving him a new fresh twist but in reality you twisted you know you you, if you twist orange you get orange juice you don't get apple juice you know so so you can't twist the character and make a different character come out you can twist the character but but the the essence of that character has to stay the same if you twist it and something else comes out you, you you broke the character and I can't appreciate it knowing the character. I think this is why a lot of Thor fans didn't like the Thor movies. I'm not a Thor fan. I loved the movies. You yeah. know, Thor Ragnarok yeah. is one of my favorite movies of all time. And and Thor fans were like, no, it's the worst Thor movie I've ever seen. It's, it's the worst Marvel movie because that movie really took Thor and twisted him and something else came out of him. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this kind of joking you know, juvenile short you know, haircut sort of thing. Yeah. And, and the prankster and just the, you know, like, you know, just, uh, it's just a little bit, it's a different character where yeah. they didn't mind it from the first movies, you know, cause it was a little bit more true, but Ragnarok really twisted more so and and a different character came out. So since I don't know Thor, um, in such a strong, intimate way, like I know some other characters, especially Batman, uh, or DC, uh, it's one of those things that I was able to swallow just fine where other people said, no, that, that does not, that's not the Kool-Aid that I poured, you know, or, or been drinking, you know, forever. Um, and then the other fatal flaw I think of the DC movies is that ultimately the, the hero always has to, you know, save, a, a huge, you know, world ending event instead of just a local event. And in the Marvel yeah. movies, it's a lot more local. Granted, the Avengers had a bigger, you know, 
opening in the sky, but it was isolated. It wasn't opened all around the sky. They only attacked one city. It was only yeah, one war zone. Yeah, you're just having and one had, area. Yeah. yeah, and you had all the Avengers there. So, you know, it wasn't just one person taking this crazy amount, you know, of go. And then you, when you isolate the movies, you know, Thor, Thor Ragnarok, again, he had multiple villains that he had to beat. One of the villains he beat by just running away. That's he a did. very realistic thing. Yeah, he, uh, he threw, yeah, through, you know, what you know, whatever it's called, Satan's butthole or something like that. Yeah, you know, I think it was Satan's anus, I think is what it was. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, I mean, he basically ran. And that's a very real type of thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to win this, you know, crazy fight. Um, so I got to get out of here, you know, type yeah, of thing. Anyone. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That's why I think if you do the twist, like, I don't mind a twist every now and then of a character. Yeah. Like, do the twist. There's going to be someone making fan out of that. Uh, <laughs> you do the twist of a character, right? Like, the best one I think I've ever seen, and it goes with Batman a little bit, is Batman Beyond. They're like, we're doing Batman, but it's the future. And it's like, oh, wait, what? And it's like, right. yeah. It's this whole thing like that. Like, I, I personally like Batman Beyond. I thought he was awesome. I love the cartoon. That was my first Batman cartoon. My first yeah. Batman was Batman Beyond, because I'm a little bit younger so it's like i feel but it's still that thing of it worked in a sense to me it worked i don't know about you yeah. did you did you like batman beyond at all so so batman beyond um the cartoon i thought was oh great i thought it was a yeah. great fresh take on it by keeping true to who bruce wayne was because bruce yeah. wayne was still in it and and bruce wayne as an old bruce wayne is how you can imagine him a bit stockier still super clever still super opinionated and then yeah. you had this, you know, young person that, you know, basically stole the suit. It's kind of like Ant Man, by the way, of the movie. Um, oh God, it is. And, oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. no. And um, you know, type of thing. So, uh, so Batman Beyond, you know, was ahead of its time in terms of, you know, how this, you know, you know, relationship began. And uh, Terry McGinnis, right? Uh, yeah. Batman Beyond. He, you know, he had a good personality, good heart. You know, younger, younger sibling. Um, you know, girlfriend. I mean, all the all the different things that you kind of wish Batman had, because it's almost the opposite. Where Batman's family got taken away, where this person not only now has all this other people in his life already that he cares about, now he has this mentor that's a legend, and mm -hmm. it's just interesting on how how that whole dynamic went. Minus. And that's and that's adding to the not minus and that's adding to the fact that it was just a super interesting action-packed show um i actually got to do the coloring for uh the first batman beyond series so oh, when really? batman beyond actually entered the dc universe um canon i was actually on that that series so i was, I was pretty lucky pretty stoked on that one yeah i mean it's overall something i, I gotta be honest that intro was amazing i don't know yeah. why but batman beyond intro was just something that's a, you said ahead of its time that was ahead of its time almost yeah in a yeah. sense and then you look at it now you're like well that's very early 2000s <laughs> it really still sticks in that area i mean it, what about it like, holds it do oh it does oh yeah. it very much does yeah. same with uh, all the batman animated it, they hold very the uh the one that gets me emotional a little bit is the one where clayface i mentioned the podcast before but the one where clayface loses a piece of himself and it becomes the little girl and robin right. falls in love with him with her yeah that yeah that's the one that gets me a little bit it has to say goodbye and stuff that that's an emotional episode <laughs> so i don't know why yeah, no i mean going going back to the very original batman series mm -hmm. this is probably the reason why batman became and your original question of why batman is because the storylines are relatable and local yeah. and yes. they're not they're not put into such a global scale that i don't know what's going on yeah. Um, and, and again, comparing them to the DC movies are so different than the DC cartoons where the DC cartoons seem to, even with, you know, JLA and things like that with the Justice League, they seem to be able to always have a local appeal where they are interacting, where the movies always go out of, eventually always go out of that locality of unrelatable it starts out relatable like the wonder woman movies are brilliantly filmed brilliantly acted uh and 75 to 80 percent brilliantly written and then the last 10 percent of that movie becomes global and on a big scale because they think they have to top it and going back to ragnarok we said he ran away from the villain once 
he ran away from the villain twice because ultimately he had to he had to get rid of uh, you know his mm. his uh, Asgard to get you could, rid of yeah you so. could say three times because there was two villains he ran away from at the end and then so he could say he ran away from three villains because he ran right. away from Hela and the other one like yeah. yeah yeah David thanks for being on the show to like get, blow my <laughs> mind with you give me a new perspective. But this is also why I like Ragnarok is that mm. it's you're watching a hero, you're appreciating his power, you're appreciating his strength, you're appreciating in in whether it's you know Stark or someone that their their charm or their love or their you know with with Ant Man they're carrying it. But you're you're not thinking this person is just so amazing that they can't be beat. In so many times uh, in the Marvel movies, the successful ones especially. You are showing flaws and weakness in a relatable sense, um, not through curse words or violence, but just through character development, character flaws, character you know weaknesses. Where again, you go back to you know um, I can't wait to watch the Snyder cut to see if there's any differences. Yeah, but I'm hoping, you go. Hoping. Yeah, you go back to you know Justice League. There's no flaws. You know, there's no. there's they they go after someone, they beat them up, and then they you know, say they need this and need that. And then it's some big global scale type of thing. And, um, and again, they squeeze the characters and all of a sudden something else comes out. You know, I think, I think all the acting is done really well. I mean, um, I always said that, uh, the actor who plays, uh, uh, Superman, Henry Cavell, he should have always been cast as Batman. Um, because if you look, if you look at his other roles, he has such a darkness and an edge to him that, he would have been a great Bruce Wayne, which is part of the reason why they looked at him for a Superman of that kind of like, hey, you know, good smile, good face. But then as Batman, he would have been dark and edgy because not that Ben Affleck doesn't have the range or other people didn't have the range, but he has such um, a superhero vibe of someone who would absolutely be the Dark Knight. In fact, if they ever make a Authority movie, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the book Authority, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's a character named Midnighter and he would be a perfect Midnighter. Yeah. Oh my God, David! Yeah. I want you to run things. <laughs> I want you to run things. I, I also want you to write Batman now. Like, also, I'm, we're you need to be in charge. Give this man money, people. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> my God, I like it. You've opened me up a little bit to opening to seeing things in a new perspective here. Which, thank you for that, by the way, because I love being able to do that. I love learning. So this is that in general, but. <laughs> Man, that's honestly though, you need to write Batman too. Like you really I, do. Batman would Batman be absolutely a dream. You know, my my book, my creator owned Stained, uh, that is sold out now. You, you can still get it digitally, but uh, hopefully it'll get reprinted, you know, soon when all this you know stuff is over. Um, but uh that is kind of like a nod to Batman. You know, in in yeah. my my creator owned character. You know, there's so much of me in it, but I have been so heavily influenced to a, a Batman that there's a lot of him in it as well. Um, again, different characters, different twists. You know, you 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 can twist Batman all you want. You know, Emma, the main character of Stained, won't come out of it. You know, and vice versa. You can twist Emma all you want. Batman won't come out of it. But you know, there's definitely a lot of influences. Man. There's there's actually one in the very first issue. There's actually one uh, panel that I paid a homage to Batman, where she's she's sitting up top, you know, in the panel on a on a wire, you know, on a little ledge, and then the next panel it's the same shot, but she's gone, you know, Aww. and and the next panel to that she's behind the bad guy, good. and that's my only really like hardcore homage to to Batman, yeah, that's of, good, you know, though. here that's now awesome. and there how that happened, you know, type of thing, oh, but that's sweet. Yeah. That's yeah. we do you we all have our favorites as people who work in comics we'll have our favorites of stuff we worked on do you have a favorite batman scene or something like that that you've worked on do you ever think there's you know there's there's been a couple mm -hmm. um you know I, i've worked with doug on several batmans i worked on i worked with uh jock on batman and the black mirror with scott snyder so good. um i've worked with will spartacio on batman confidential uh, I've worked with uh, so many. I'm, I'm literally I couldn't name every artist so that I've much. worked with on Batman um, because we'd be we'd be here just naming artists for an hour because uh, I've done that many Batman titles. 
Um, it's hard to pick one. There are definitely moments that mm. that I really love, like the the killer whale scene in Batman: The Black Mirror. Um, oh. with, yeah, with the orcas. That something something about just working on the orca was really cool. Really? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it was just it was just the way Jock drew the the page was it was just so cool because it's not every day. You know, we talk about like you know you know about said you know what what did you do today? Oh, you yeah. know, I I. I colored a, a you know killer orc or well um that you know was trying to eat batman or i killed Very one that good. was dead in the museum floor it's like well, what what are you working on oh what's this mystery story oh okay yeah, um, oh okay he's not he's sober isn't he yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know i would it, it's it's really impossible for me to pick one they're they're definitely right. highlights you know batman uh the latest detective run uh that doug and i did mm-hmm. um uh, 994, the opening splash page uh, was Batman flying through the air. And it was so beautiful that they right. actually made a black and white statue of it. Uh, you have that statue? I do. I have one. Good. Good. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I was selling I was selling remarked versions of them. And so oh. I kept one of the ones that was there. Um, there was, you know, the funny part is one of the other most iconic ones. Uh, there's was Doug flying through the air, then Jock, but it was not Bruce Wayne. Um, it was Dick Grayson flying through the air in the Batman, um, uh-huh. uh, Batman and the Black Mirror. In fact, I have it as a lithograph. Yeah. The oh, you do. Oh. Yeah. Um, and, oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. So that one, um, that one is is another iconic moment but uh i mean i've worked with dustin Wynn. i've I've worked with so many amazing artists it's really hard to pick one because they're they're all so fantastical uh imaginative moments that that's really really tough just to pick one uh if i had to pick a favorite book that i worked on very storyline um it would be just as hard because is it that the man who laughs is it batman the black mirror is it is it Batman? You know uh, the Batman who laughs. Is it you know the run up to Detective One Thousand, which is like the super iconic storyline where you know I got to do the main t- uh, storyline with Peter Tomasi and Doug Monkey. Um, you know it it's tough. You know yeah. is it very first Batman? You know is it Batman Beyond? Yeah. Is it's, it you know when you have the big resume and I I, I feel it because. They're like, oh, which one's your favorite comic book you work? I'm like, I have seven. I don't, I can't choose. It's like choosing their favorite child. Like, I get it. Like, people always, like, it was a question some, uh, a fan of mine wanted to ask. They wanted me to ask you. And I was like, yeah, I'll ask. But it's still one of those, like, I I know. It's impossible. It's It's so easier impossible. to tell you what product I hated. Oh. <laughs> and more than, Valid. and as a professional, I'll never do that. That stuff, you know, always stays with me, you know, yeah. to the grave. Because uh, I don't believe in, in talking bad you know, about others and just absorbing bad experiences and, and, you know, learning from them. But uh, mm-hmm. it would be much easier because um, they're very rare, you know, so it's, so they stick out in a career a lot more than, mm-hmm. you know, success rates. It's easier to tell you what family member, you know, uh, is the one that you don't want at the, at the party it's than true. which ones you want at the party. So which is uh, that one you avoid at the Christmas party, like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have one child, but I always tell him he's my favorite, you know, and oh, I, so it's, it's, it's that it's that type of mentality that, you know, every every project is my favorite. I know, you know, to whoever asked that question, you know, wanted to ask it, it's probably not the most satisfying answer, but it's the most honest, sincere answer that there's as a fan myself, especially of that character. There's so many great moments that I've been lucky to be a part of. Yeah. Um, that it's really hard, but I would say Dick Grayson flying through the air as Batman. There's a lot to that. And part of the reason why I have it on my wall, um, not only because of the creative team and how that project started and how su- successful that project was, but also because it's not Bruce Wayne. It's it's his protege, and maybe as we talked about, maybe that could be me. You know, it like me- yeah, it means a lot metaphorically uh, more than just the work. You know, like, there's a lot into what's there. It is. It means that you could be the next Michael Jordan. You could yeah. be the next Wayne Rexy. You could be the next, you know, Tom Brady. You could be the next, you know, David Beckham. You know, um, you know. So it's so it is those, you know, type of thing. And and that, and if you look at sports, we have had the next Wayne Gretzky. 
you know, yeah. maybe he has not won as many, you know, rings, you know, Stanley Cups, but but we but he's you know they they have and there's a couple of people that arguably could be considered. We do have the next Michael Jordan and LeBron James. We do have the next David Beckham in Mbappe or you know um, you know Ronaldo or it's, it's not even then. I mean Ronaldo's you know was young. Uh, I mean we've already people don't even have David Beckham's name in, in their vocabulary anymore uh, because there's so many people that have came to not revolutionize sports but just dominate it and it's it's great. So I mean Mbappe you know can definitely be the next Pele because he's already won a World Cup. He's already uh, uh, won so much uh, of his league. He needs to win Champions League. But if he does that, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's a resume you can't argue with. At, yeah. He's only, oh, yeah. I think he's only 23. So, you know. Yeah. It, when yeah. you get to people's age, like, I know the stats and you know all they've done. But then when you get to some people in sports and you get to their age, sometimes it makes yeah. me feel really bad about myself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, have I, have I, did I do good in life? Oh, God. <laughs> Look in the mirror like. Shit. Yeah, it it is weird because in American sports, it doesn't mean anything until you've done it for ten years. Yeah. In world sports, they take it as your accomplishments, and the quicker you do it, the more impressive it is if you're a part of it. Because, um, you know, we we put such age standards on American sports, and it's kind of like comics the same. You know, like when I was, you know, I started at fifteen. There's other artists artists out there and writers out there that started at fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Mm-hmm. You know, so it wasn't like I was you know, anomaly, it was just the fact that, you know, people don't understand or give, especially, you know, in America, they don't give, you know, I guess, gravitas or, or, or the proper due credit to what you can accomplish as a, as a young person. And one of the things I do is I, I speak at schools and uh, I, I give a, a, my topic, you know, the, the way they pay attention is because of my comic career. But the topic is really, you know, is a success, how to how to become a success and how to motivate yourself um, to navigate through disappointments or roadblocks. And my story ultimately says, if, if you want something, you will go get it in any direction you can. So if you are trying to become, let's talk just about comics, if you're trying to be an artist, but you can't get into that company, but you want to work for that company. You got to look at their other job offerings. If they have, you know, a production assistant or they have, uh, you know, um, a receptionist or office manager, you know, low in, get in because then you meet the people and it's amazing what you can do after you meet the people. If you say, well, no one would hire me as an artist, so I stopped. That means you didn't really want to get into the industry because you stopped there. Because there are so many jobs in this industry, they just may not pay exactly what you want now, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to pay later. Um, I worked for minimum wage for like five straight years. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was a it was a long time before I really got, you know, a decent salary. Um, and even then, it was still incredibly low compared to an actual adult. Um, and it wasn't until I really, you know, made it. Um, as a freelancer that I was actually now making, you know, a, a salary that could be a career um, and no longer just a hopeful dream. But it took it took a long time. This, the saying is, you know, uh, overnight successes take decades, you know, yeah. to, to make happen. And, and that is very true. I love that, man. I've told that to so many people before in my life. I relate hard to it. It's true. Shit, I work in the film industry back when you could. And that I started as a PA, you know, yeah. you have to like, what, like, I love that so much. I've told so many people that before. And I, I sum it up by saying when, if you really wanted something, if you really want to do it, when it pushes back, because if you do something, it's going to push back. And if you really want to do it, when it pushes back, you push back even harder. Yep. It's what you got to yep. do. And it's the motive. If you want to do something, then you will fight for it. Like you and I didn't get where we are in life just by sitting around. You know, it'll be yeah, like, yeah, it, it was tough. Like, no, you, what you go for, you got to power through and work hard, you know? Yeah. And you don't, you don't have to do any moral, uh, you know, uh, negotiating either. You know, it's no. just, it's just literally head down. You know, I worked 80 hours a week minimum for years, you know, when you're young, I mean, this is, this is the time to do it when you're young, this is the time to put in all that hard work. 
because it does pay off when you're older. And uh, ultimately, uh, as a now older person, you know, you know, twice the age of when I first started in comics, more than twice the age, you know, than I started in comics, um, I would still hold true to that. You know, I'm glad I put in all that work, you know, then to get to where I'm now. And um, because the last thing you want to do is do a lot of work then and a lot of work now, you know, I'll, I'll double yeah. up back then. And uh, I know there's a lot of people in comics and in, in jobs and in freelancing that constantly say, oh, it's not right that I'm working, you know, 80 hours, you know, for minimum wage without extra pay as a freelancer. I'm like, that's the job you're choosing. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things because them saying it's not right is like a, a, a footballer or, or a basketball player, or, you know, um, saying it's not right that I have to hit the gym, you know, every day for four hours to play to this sport. It. It's a good way to put it. It's a very good yeah, way to put they're, it. They're not getting paid to hit the gym. You know, they're, they're hitting the gym in hopes to, to have a life where later in life they won't have to work anywhere i mean this is why so many athletes get really fat at the at the end of their career because they're like i'm done i never want to lift the weight again just give me the donuts you know and uh and and that's uh, you know okay for them but it's it's uh life even in capitalism even in you know um you know any any way with unions and stuff like that it's always going to be about how much work we put in so i always encourage people yes don't sell yourself short don't take jobs that, you know, for money that you don't think is worth it. You know, all of that is correct. Your guys, everyone that says that's point on, don't work for free. However, don't be, don't expect to be paid the same amount as someone who's been working for 25 years. And, and I used to art, I used to art direct the world of Warcraft and oh. um, the TCG. Yeah. And um, uh, for Cryptozoic Entertainment. And uh, one of the things that I had to do uh was uh the budget for the sets where i had to uh -huh. you know pay certain people certain amounts and some certain people and and ultimately they had kind of had like a flat rate across the board but the budget was was cut and so i had to figure out how do we do that and do we cut everyone's budget across the board well there's people that's been working you know as as um an illustrator for 25 plus years at a certain rate um that have never got a pay raise and the last thing they're willing to accept is a pay decrease. And if I want them on a set, I got to keep their page rate the same and find someone else to pay less. Mm -hmm. That's just budgets. If you want to be paid for art, you got to work through the budget. Um, and if it's not worth it to you, your right is to say no. Yeah. Your right is to say, if you can give me this much, I'll do it. And then if not, then don't do it. There's too many people out there that get frustrated with the people that are, are willing to do it to build that resume again i totally agree don't work for free you know don't work for you know publicity don't work for things like that because ultimately that is someone taking advantage of and usually people that request that are never going to get you the publicity that you actually want yeah. um but it is there is a scale and you know you should always understand that scale so you can so you can actually grow you know, because if you if you if you combat it, they, they'll hire someone else and you might have missed that opportunity that we talked about of, of taking it. I'm so glad, David, you teach this stuff at schools. I'm so glad this is very important information, dude. You I couldn't say anything better than that. Like, that's a beautiful way you put it, man. Like, I have people listening to this slash watching don't take anything away from it. Then I don't know how to help you in life. I really don't know. You are it's so far gone. Yeah. And I don't mean this to come off preachy. Everybody, everybody no, no, has no. their right to their own path and, and their mm -hmm. own opinion on it. And this is just mine. And, and, uh, if they do a different way, you know, uh, I think that's you're awesome. Giving, and, you're and giving helpful good. tips. Yeah. You're giving, yeah. you're a guy who's made it. You obviously have a career, you know what you're doing. You're like, this is how I've done it. You can choose the path if you want to or not, but here's how I made it to where I am today. And very good spot, by the way. And it's like, also, you say you were like double or triple the age you were when you first started in the comics. I'm supposed to say it again. You fucking look good for the, whatever <laughs> age you are. I like you. You make it seem like you're 60, and I'm like, what the hell? There's no I'm way. Not, I'm not. I'm not there, but yeah, no, I. Like you, you said, you said Batman Beyond was, you know, your intro comic. Batman Beyond, I don't think came out until I was way, way out of you know college oh age, shit so. really <laughs> that was my intro not intro comic my first intro tv show the batman so yeah. make it clear on that one because I, I was born in 97 i don't know if that just aged you or made you feel old or not but <laughs> yeah i was out of high school by then 
Oh shit. <laughs> No, I don't mind being okay. old. Old, old. If you make the right decisions, old, old is good. And uh, it doesn't make True. it an easy decision. It doesn't mean your life is going to be, you know, filled with riches and boats and yachts and all that. But it, it'll be happy. You make the right decisions, you know, it'll be happy. And I've, I've, I've done those enough, and so I, I'm very content and and um, happy with with the way my life is and thankful. And and uh, as we talked about with the pandemic, you know, me, my wife, and and my son. We have a good family dynamic, you know, of of the three people I care about most, and so ultimately having them with me during this, you know, hard time, um, you know, is is really what has made it relatively, you know, painless mm. for all of us, for all three of us. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Um, I don't want to take too much more of your time today, David. Uh, where can people find you out on social media, my man? And where, what do you have to promote that you not NDA blocked, of course. So, so I mean, obviously, obviously, Batman: Legend of Dark Knight. It's a, it's a digital first book. It will come out in print. Uh, I definitely recommend people check it out. It starts off with Derek Robinson, uh, you know, uh, working on it. I come in way later down the road, um, but it's, it's a wonderfully uh, curated book. It's an anthology. Uh, a lot of people uh, that don't understand anthologies, you have isolated stories, sure, but what you do is you have. Um, a curated experience of just amazing talent, uh, writers and artists that um, who could never really work on Batman because there's only so many Batman books. Uh, but now you get to see uh, these talented people work on them. So I'm, I'm really proud to be part part of it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at my zombies. Um, just search David Baron Comics Instagram. You usually find me like that. Mm. And uh, uh, I have four Twitter books coming out uh, in the next, I'd say, 12 to 24 months. Um, oh, shit. Uh, we're, hoping, uh, we're hoping that a lot of them get announced, but uh, if you follow me on social media, you'll be able to uh, you know, find out all about that. I'm going to launch a new website soon. Uh, I highly recommend uh, when that happens, you follow me on social media to then follow me and sign up for my newsletter because that's where you'll get discounts for books, you'll get discounts for toys, you'll get discounts uh, for autographs, uh, um, cool. books, uh, and uh, um, remarks and, and sketches and things like that uh, through that newsletter, Lot, lots of giveaways. Um, can't wait to go see people, um, you know, back at shows. Hopefully we'll, you know, get this vac vaccine situated and, uh, we'll all get that shot so we can go out and talk comics in, in person again. Yeah. If you, if you're ever in Phoenix, man, and you ever come to Phoenix comic con and I'll visit your yeah. booth, if you're or come to my, and I'll, I'll buy you a beer or your drink of choice, man. Awesome. Yeah. No, Phoenix, Phoenix comic con was one of my favorites for a while. Uh, yeah. you know, it'll be, I love downtown Phoenix. Um, and, uh, all, all the good food there uh but yeah no it'll, it'll be it'll be nice absolutely Sweet. well thank you man for taking the time also for a very enlightening episode too like i get I, i'm jealous of, of your son right now because like my god what speeches i it, it sounds bad when i say speeches but it's not meant to be it's like what cool like very enlightening things like it is this is normally <laughs> son now listen <laughs> like i would kill for that shit <laughs> It's it's the coach in me. My wife's a coach as well. I think, oh, I think it's shit. the coach. I mean, it's part of part of it. But yeah, no, I, uh, I feel bad we didn't talk more more. You oh, know, dude, you're fine. Uh, oh, you. I don't know if you listened to the last episode I did. We talked very little about comics and so much about right. more other shit. So it is fair. It's very fair. Comics are awesome. I love them. You know, it's definitely yeah. a, a, a a release and and a great way to. Uh, imagine you know different storylines and and the art form itself is just brilliant uh and my favorite part about comics is is that 99 percent of all comics is a team effort and just really shows what when you collaborate together you know what magic can happen it takes a team to make art man it really yeah. does really yeah. does well i'll let you get going boss i will let you know when the episode comes up again thank you for coming on david absolutely thank you for having me of course see you man peace have a good one. Bye-bye.